What is up, down and sideways, all you beautiful individuals? It is League Unlocked, Eric and Mark here with you. And yes, we have returned a little bit of a vacation hiatus for us to kind of be well rested, refreshed for the final push in towards the end of the summer split playoffs, worlds, all the good stuff. And in the week or so that we've been gone, a lot happened, but we kind of narrowed it down to uh, four of the main headlines. And really the biggest theme amongst them is upsets across the board in a couple different regions. Hey, we'd be hypocrites if we didn't make sure to, to check out and, and take some time to avoid burnout, just like we talk about with these players all the time. Take a little bit of a, a breakaway, but the games, there were no breakaways from the games. The games were hot and fresh and they were going through it. LCK, LCS, LPL, even the LEC jumping in on those summer finals. We got a lot to talk about. We begin with the only, the first undefeated regular season in the LCS. That is, of course, Team Liquid going the immaculate 7-0, 14-3 overall when you look at the game score and obviously highlighted by that big series win against Cloud9, which was incredibly close, so... They're not, you know, impervious, invincible heading into playoffs, but obviously respect where respect is due. Team Liquid, best team in the LCS. And Impact legit might get MVP 11 years into his career. How wild is that? That we can go all this time and it's still the same answer in that top side. It is Impact coming through for Team Liquid. And yes, it is a Team Liquid that rolls through undefeated throughout the regular season, as you mentioned out. That does not mean undefeated in the game score. You go through those series and you will find one or two, three drop matches, drop uh, scores in there as well. But overall, it is that clean 7 and 0. When you're standing at the top of it and you're looking at the rest of the LCS teams that they've taken down, it's a fantastic achievement. It is a wonderful thing. And we need to slow down on the brakes. I'm talking about it being the, the very best that we have ever seen in the LCS. And that's not you know, a, a boomer mentality of, oh, remember these old years, or, oh, remember the TSM era, all these type of, it's not even about that. It's more so just a statement, again, on, yes, this is wonderful. Yes, this is fantastic, good, A+. plus. It's only one round, Robin. It is only a single trip around the LCS. And when you take into account how close that matchup was against Cloud9, you can't tell me that you wouldn't want to see a second round of that matchup for all the marbles for a situation to go for that undefeated split. And again, when you can do it on that rematch, that situation, that second trip around the LCS, it means a heck of a lot more if that was the situation. It's it's pretty skewed historically when you are talking about the first ever undefeated regular season. When we've gone through so many different formats throughout the years, there was the best of three era before then we were having double round robin, single round robin. It's it's hard to look back historically and statistically when there's been so many different formats uh, going on. But hey, no question, Team Liquid, the best team in the LCS right now. I'm, I'm not talking about all time yet. At least let them go through the playoff push. But it does feel like this is the strongest uh, team, team Liquid or top team in the LCS that we've had in a couple of years. And when you throw in... C9 and FlyQuest both at the level that they are. You're feeling the best about the top of the LCS that you have in, I don't know, three, four years? Now, I want to be careful because we know how quickly that can slip away type of situation. Oh, we don't have expectations for Worlds, though. Nah, 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 nah. Anything can jump in that type of way. I think one of the important things to look at here for Team Liquid, now that you have this achievement under your belt, you've knocked down a relatively you know good run at MSI, EWC, all these type of things you're starting to get the roses. People are starting to ad admire you and acknowledge what has gone right here. The question is, can you now continue that as the favorite, as the expected performers is going to be one of the things that I want to keep track of specifically, of course, players like APA and Yon, the two young cornerstones that we look at with this Team Liquid team. Can they handle this shift in narrative, the pressure, the expectations that will come with being this undefeated Team Liquid that heads towards LCS playoffs? Worst case after this regular season, though, you're talking about probably four-fifths of this squad being on that first-team All-Pro conversation. That's how good they've been in this regular season. They've been so good, they did something that Gen G 
could not do, and that is the perfect regular season. It's deja vu. The first time Gen G has lost a LCK best of series since February in spring, and who else but a slumping KT roster fresh off of losses to Freddie Brian and Nong Shim. They did it in February. They do it again here against Gen G. You ever see one of those crazy long baseball games where, you know, it's going way in late into the night. They've gone through every single pitcher. We got to bring in a position player to fill in and to make the stopgap type of thing. And the guy throws something incredibly slow, but the guy the hitters can't get it because it is such a changeup. That's the only way it's got to be for KT Rolster <laughs> with this for Gen Chi. That has to be it. All the, the 40 the mile an hour curveball. <laughs> For, for Barry Bonds over here looking to put it over the hit, the benches, but he can't because you can't make contact with that type of one. And KT Rolster, call it however you will. I think on the day, certainly a level up and, and, and you know, a, a real locking in on how what they needed to do to get the performance against Gen G. Certainly a bit of a, a, a slip up on the side of Gen G, a rare lapse and rare mistake in what had been a perfect streak. And the reality is, I think a lot of people, at least myself, were expecting a series where going 18-0 is so unbelievably difficult, especially in the LCK. Keeping, maintaining that level of focus for 36 uh, plus games is incredibly difficult. And they fall short against KT Rolster, but credit where credit is due. This is not the same team. I, I don't care what you say. They just got o 2 would by Kwang Dong and by the bros because the level of play that KT can show, the variation on series to series, day to day, game to game even, is absolutely unbelievable. They are almost living up to the KT roaster coaster mantra a little too much this split. I, I, it, it's got to be one of those things where you want to see a psychiatrist after because you're looking one way and you're going... It is KT Roaster. And you get to another match and, and you look, disappeared. It's a ghost. Nobody's there. Nothing's happening. And you look, just when you didn't expect to see anything there, you see it again type of thing. KT Roaster. What an incredible series it really is. And it's one of those ones, as you mentioned, is that comment? Is that talk about the enigma that they are within the LCK that you can have such clear and defined 0 2 losses to some of the worst teams in the LCK? and managed to come through against the best team in the LCK. And not only that, but hold it through that whole, you know, that series really locking it down in the important moments. This was it for KT Rolster. And this is certainly one that saves any type of possibility for them. They're still on that outside chance looking in type of thing. But man, oh man, was this ever uh, an unexpected victory for the squad. And, uh, you know, obviously BDD now is second in player of the game in the LCK. Uh, so far, he had some incredible, I mean, we're getting smolder in every single lane now. We're getting, uh, the 80 carries are absolutely out of control in terms of the solo lanes. And that was case in point. That was just one upset that happened this past week. We move to Mad Lions Koi, a oh, squad no. who shouldn't even have been in season finals. The format's a little bit broken, but showcasing... Well, we deserve to be here because they go winless in summer playoffs and somehow get a Game 5 upset against G2. Mirwin in this series played Lulu, Zeri, Corky, and then the Nidalee top opposite Broken Blades Irelia in Game 5. This is, if I've ever seen one, a clearer example of don't ask questions, shoot your shot. Take your chance. Don't ask why or how or it's possible that the Mad Lions Koi are in this opportunity. Take your chance. Take your opportunity. Just lock in they... Italy top. <laughs> and it worked. And that, again, that extends even more so. Again, perfect player to talk about. Mirwin, with that idea, what we have talked about for so long with him, with this Mad Lions Koi team, recognizing that his willingness, his openness to the champion pool on the top side and what can be experimented with this Mad Lions Koi team can truly be an X factor, be a difference maker when you talk about a best of series and especially in a position in an open area like the LEC in that top side where things can change, where you can disrupt what has been that established order or the established expected playing style. 
Mirwin rolls through and he rolls the dice consecutively on himself and his champions. And he manages to make it work for this Mad Lions Koi team. He's not the only one, of course, to talk about with what went well, what, what went right for the Mad Lions Koi. And frankly, what went wrong for G2 in this series to get to this type of result. But man, oh man, is that an important one to, to check in on. One that gives you some excitement thinking about what's possible. And then future rounds of, the, of these uh, uh, summer grand finals for the LEC. Yeah, that was kind of the star takeaway from this. The other big one was the level up from Frescawi because what should be the biggest mismatch in this set, Caps versus Frescawi, was not that much of a mismatch whatsoever. Caps had moments, of course, and he was by no means at his normal playoff level that we are accustomed to. But Frescawi more than showed up and more than exceeded the expectations that we got from him throughout all of summer. And I think throughout spring split, after outside outside of that, uh, sorry, the winter beginning split, Frescawi has been one of the players on this Mad Lions court team that has had the biggest amount of question marks, the most amount of criticism put towards him for why the results have started to trend in this type, in the wrong direction compared to where it started out from and what was that potential path. Now we see a resurgence. We see him definitely step up to the plate. I don't think... Uh, anyone is necessarily going to just flat out say something as crazy as he outplayed Caps in this type of situation, but he certainly rose to the situation in the mid lane, leveled out, and found a way to be a contrib uh, an important contributing member for this Mad Lions team in this mega upset win. Now, now you're looking at the body of G2, by the way, for basically the past month. Oh, they oh. lose that winner's final to Fnatic. They muster their way back to finals for a rematch and 3-0 Fnatic in a series they have absolutely no business winning a game let alone winning three in a row and all of a sudden you're sitting here this team just won a split but you feel like they've been slumping for the better part of three weeks yeah and I don't know if this is the the 100% uh reason why type of thing but one of the things that I'm certainly noticing and this was obviously an example in this series with Mirwin is you're looking at Broken Blade in the top side and the top lane gameplay that we're getting for G2 and how it goes, it feels like an unfinished road because there are segments, there are times. Smooth pavement, everything. You're rolling down, you're ripping down. It is fantastic. That is the Orn games when they're going right for him on G2. And then we've had all these other games where things aren't going quite so right. It is that bumpy patch. It's that gravel road that isn't quite there where you have some weaknesses, you have some chances, and that's exactly the ticket that cost you two this past weekend. And obviously now they got a full loser's bracket run ahead of them that's actually do or die, even though they've already clinched world. So is it really do or die? I wouldn't be surprised if G2 bows out earlier than people are expecting because they've already clinched and are focused on that world championship. But somehow, MDK beating G2 wasn't even the craziest upset over the past week because you had the ultimate frauds. NIP, they go winless. We're talking zero and seven. Three games total did they win in the best of three stage uh, on that Ascension group in the LPL. And what did they do but climb their way back and somehow, some way, take down JDG in game five? Holy moly. JDG put them on the red alert watch for possibly missing out on this year's edition of Worlds. Crazy to think that it could be the frauds of NIP. And yes, I'm not ready to remove that fraud label from NIP at this point. It has been stamped on and off, on and off, washed on and off that it's irremovable at this point. Fraud is there. We'll see how far the frauds can go in the playoffs is going to be the biggest question to look at for the LPL because absolutely getting by JDG didn't have that one in the cards. I think JDG certainly had not necessarily shown the level that is an elite label that we throw on in the LPL. They were one of the ones, you know, kind of masquerading a bit under last year's label of elite, still with it getting a little bit of a buff from play from Ruler down in the bottom lane, maybe combined with a sprinkling of some of our excitement, some of our hype, that Sheer could be that answer to provide that additional element for this team to be at that elite level. Not so much, not so much, and certainly not so much in this series where it was really 
you know, it was toe to toe. It did go the full distance, but NIP finding their advantage. And we're getting the Flandre sightings back when we we knew yeah. that Sheer was the guy leveling up all split, and then all of a sudden you're putting Flandre back in for when the most important matches are there. And now, if anyone's legend beats Top Esports, that is a massive if. They're going to be huge underdogs there. JDG don't even qualify for the gauntlet. They're not even going to be able to fight for a world spot. It's more likely that they will have that last chance uh, in the gauntlet. But now, NIP's miracle run, and you want to shed potentially the fraud label. Of course, the script writers, we got to match them up against Weibo Gaming in the next series for the ultimate fraud off. This isn't fair. You can't keep doing this to us with Weibo. Oh, the LPL is just pure cinema. There's no other way to describe what goes down in that region and what we get to see. That will be a heck of a showdown. Who, you know, whether you, you're going to have a result either one way or the other. And you're either coming away from it going, you know what? Tested, forged through fire and flames, NIP or Weibo are truly a real contender in the LPL. Or what you're going to see, regardless of who it is, Weibo or NIP coming out of it, you're going to know for certain that they are frauds. They are going no further. Their ticket will not be stamped in that next round type of situation. It's the LPL. That's the fantastic stuff that we get. But of course, it's with something on the other side, as you mentioned, top esports and anyone legend, where there is something on the line. It is that opportunity to knock out a JDG from an opportunity at a gauntlet type of run. Yes, Expectations should be that top esports handles business. Anyone's legend does take care of their first round and is a team that I don't think you should have any chance of, you know, uh, going under the radar in this type of one. You better be prepared if you are top esports. And now, obviously, NIP has this mega momentum heading towards that matchup against Weibo, the most insane stat for them since they started winning first to qualify against some of those uh, losers group matchups. Leanne has subbed in. Uh, for Aki and how about 11 of the 12 games he's played in playoffs have been Zyra maybe JDD shouldn't have let him play it five games in a row when it's 11 out of 12 games he's played we talk about it everywhere it seems like this is a, a, a disease an issue an infestation across the League of Legends global community it's this hubris of not banning out a champion that has been the thorn in your side the one that has been the problem no -uh. We got something cooked. We got a counter or whatever. I got an even better counter. Ban it. Don't let it in. Just out. See you later. That's the one for me. That's how you solve it. Yeah, I think. I hope. I pray that Weibo has watched this run and said, okay, main strategies, guys. <laughs> Ban Zyra. That's it. All right. Prep done for NIP. But uh, obviously, that's going to be a fantastic series as it gets rolling. Uh, just for the implications. Winner of the next round of LPL gets into that coveted bonus life round where they have the luxury of getting dropped down to losers as things really start heating up but we are back again to be breaking down all the stuff as it continues to go we'll have another global power rankings lck's one week left in the regular season playoffs going everywhere else but that is it today for league unlock eric and mark here with you a beautiful people thanks for hanging out as always and we will catch you on that flippity flip